He hasn't grown a mustache, by the way, since 1985, but it's 41 this month because it's November to raise funds for prostate cancer research. In fact, all sales from the product table right there behind Peter will be donated to that cause. In 2005, Peter was diagnosed with Parkinson's disease. He became a proud father, uh, first time dad at age 50, and he has a weakness for chocolate. He is with us today to present on the topic, Ever's Journey, Celebrating Unsung Heroes. Please join me in welcoming Peter. Thank you, Marie. What? Thank you, Marie. Thank you. Thank you for that wonderful excuse. It was wonderful. My, 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 <laughs> so well. my, 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 my mom actually wrote that. So. <laughs> I was washing dishes one morning. And they really, it, 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 when I washed the dishes, I looked out the kitchen window and to the street below. And I, one, one morning, there was an old man walking by. And he, he goes by most mornings for his morning devotional. He's, he's really old. He's got a, one of those old fedora hats, you know, those old fedora hats and a, sort of an old sweater and baggy pants and actually has dress shoes on. And he goes around the block like this using a, using a walker. And I see him going around the block and I think, well, you know, what a great guy going around the block doing his morning devotional. But one morning I was watching the dishes, a little song came on the radio. It went something like this. Bum, 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 In tune, <laughs> nice and done, nice and done. And it got me thinking about that old man. He must be 80 if he's a day. I'm wondering how many people have supported him along his life's journey for a reason, for a season, or for a lifetime. I'm wondering how many people have supported him on his life journey. Maybe, maybe uh, the healthcare system has supported him through his ups and downs. Maybe he was an adult learner with one, of, with, one of your, with, with one of your projects. I don't know. But I do know one thing, that good people have helped people along the life's journey for a reason, a season, or a lifetime. When they do that, there's a special gift. There's a special, there's a special place in the hearts of, of people that do that. And I want to celebrate that with you today, called the Unsung Hero. Now, we all have heroes. Did you have a hero growing up, or a hero now? Anybody have a hero? Yeah, a hockey player, maybe, or, or, or a ballerina, or whatever it is that you look up to. Um, I, I, I had to hear about the name of Sir Ben Hillary. He's six foot five, so I actually really do look up to him. And he climbed the world's highest mountain in 1953, May of 1953. You're familiar with what that is, of course, Mount. Everest, right? So he climbed, my, my was 1953, I, I always looked up to him, I always wanted to follow in his footsteps. So ladies and gentlemen, I'm so proud, proud to announce that back, a couple years back, I got my gear, got my, my, my mountain gear, and I got an airplane, and I actually went to meet the mountain. I'm proud to announce that I made it all the way to the bottom of Mount Everest. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. It was a great, 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 great accomplishment. So I made it to the bottom of Mount Everest, and when I got to the bottom, it was a really good view, of course, because you can look up and see all these things, and it is, it's a beautiful vista. But I, I, I learned a couple of things. And one of the things I learned was that there's, 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 there's a different view from the bottom of the hill. There's a, there's, a, there's a different view of life from the bottom of the hill. And the view is about how you help other people up the hill. Now, if, if I had gotten to the top of the hill, I could have told you story, my, my story about getting to the top of the hill and being a leadership uh, commander of the leadership team and, and just discipline and perseverance and all those big topics of, of, of what, what might happen if you get to the top of the hill. But I didn't get to the top of the hill. I wasn't one of the guys or gals that got there. 2,700 2, people climbed Mount Everest 3,400 times. There's lots of stories to tell. There's stories about the guy with a, a double leg um, where he's wearing, uh, what do you call it, prosthetics? He, he climbed the mountain. He could, he could tell a story, a great story, I'm sure. But there's another, there's another team of uh, um, folks. There's a guy that was 65 and hiked up with his 17-year-old grandson. That'd, that'd be a cool story to tell, wouldn't it? There's also another guy that's partially blind that got to the top of the mountain. So there's lots of stories to tell. We'll get into the top and go, 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 and being the, being the, the, you know, the, the executive of a great organization and all that kind of stuff. But I didn't get to the top. I got to the bottom. And at the bottom, I learned a different story. For, for, for Sir Edmund Hillary to get to the top of the mountain in 1953, it took 350 Sherpa Porter guides carrying 10 tons of gear for three months 
to get him and his buddy up to the top of the mountain. Now the Sherpa guys went up the mountain the equivalent of seven times, up and down, carrying gear, carrying gear up and down up here. Hillary goes, bop, 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 puts the flag in, says, oh, I'm the first one, da 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 I'm, I'm the king of the castle, you're the you're rascal. So he got to the top, and he's famous, he's not uh, by the Queen of England, who was actually coronated the day that he, 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 he he got on the, I was going to say, got on stage, got on the top of the top, top of the world. So, he, he, so he's famous, a hospital name, the African household name. But 350 ship reporter guides carrying 10 tons of gear for three months to get him to the top of the mountain. So when I look at you, I see the ship reporter guides of lit, 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 this, is good, this is a good word for you, of literacy in Nova Scotia. The people who help others achieve their peak experiences. The people who, who the, you help others get through their valleys of, of despair, valleys of doubt, valleys of, of, of hopelessness, perhaps, to get to their peak experience of life. And that peak experience may be a GED, maybe something like, uh, maybe something like, like this. Oh, I'll say that. So get to the top of the mountain. So I'm here to celebrate you, the unsung heroes, people that do a little hard work for a little recognition and not much pay. Does, it, does that fit? <laughs> I thought it might. So the unsung heroes. So why do we want to look at the unsung heroes? I want to look at success. I want to look at success and how to help others be successful. Because when, you're, when others are successful, you're successful. Because the, by the very definition of what you do for others is helping them get to their, get to their peak experiences of life. So the time I'd like to share with you today is about finding success and helping, helping others get success and also watching out for yourself along that journey. We're also going to play a bit of a game to, to walk the talk. You see the little number pads in the back room there. We're going to play a bit of a game. So for an hour and a half, we're going to do some talk and uh, interactive stuff, and then I'll share some stuff around that. Now, the practice thing, as you probably noticed, I've got a bit of a, a, bit of a stagger, a bit of a, a my, it, it, it affects the right side of the body, but sometimes it affects my voice. And for some reason, my voice is a little off today, so I apologize for that in, in advance. And one of, the one of the sets of words that I have a hard time pronouncing is words that start with L. <laughs> so li loving, li loving, loving, li there you go. loving literacy is actually hard for me to say, so I may just, I just may have a code for that. I'm not sure what it's going to be. Mm -hmm. lo lo I can't even say loving books. So that, that's a funny word for me, so it's just kind of ironic that I'd be talking to li 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 literacy in Nova Scotia. I think it's kind of fun. Anyway, so Parkinson's affects 8,400 people in, in the Maritimes. It's, it's, a, it's a huge, it's second only to Alzheimer's in terms of its effects. I was diagnosed in 2004, 2005. And so far, it's, it's progressing quite slowly, so I'm pleased with that because when it starts to affect my voice, it starts to affect my, my, the, things that I, the, 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 the things that I love to do, and that's to talk. So there's a, there's a bit of a mountain ahead of me. I'm going to be climbing. So why, why, why do this thing about looking at unsung heroes? Because unsung heroes help, by definition, they help other people succeed. And you, by definition, help other people get litter in all the stuff that you do on your wonderful chart there. Quality literacy, essential skills, lifelong learning. So it's, it's, all, it's all good stuff. So success. Now, I like to celebrate success from the point of view of marking the moments. I want to, I want to mark this conference as a moment of success with, with the organizers, with Anne-Marie and, and Jane, and everybody put, put, put this off for you so you, could, so you could hopefully go home and do a better job of what you do, go back to work. So that's a marker of success. But there's lots of milestones of, of success. I want to celebrate a couple of them with you now. There's, there's, the, the, these have been researched quite heavily, but I, uh, I just want to tag these for you. Uh, success milestones start really early at young ages. How many people have kids uh, under, under age five? And, okay, you, you, you'll, you'll, you'll recognize the first one. So, success at age four is not peeing in your pants. <laughs> so that's a marker of milestone of success. When you help a person achieve that, then you, 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 you've achieved a good little marker of love life. Success at age 12 is having friends. That's always helpful to have, have kid, for kids to have friends and that kind of stuff. It's kind of useful. Success at age 16 is having a driver's license. That, 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 I, I remember the day I got my driver's license. It was the most fantastic thing I ever had. I just felt a, a whole sense of a whole sense of freedom and joy, and it was a wonderful marker of success. Success continues, of course, through the ages. Success at age 20 is having sex. <laughs> now, they say that's, that, that's, that number is actually quite a little bit too old. <laughs> but we'll, we'll see. Success at age 35 is being literate. That would be successful for folks that you work with, being literate, being able to uh, learn, learn, learn from the world around them and so to celebrate that. The life cycle continues with, uh, with the success at age 50 is being literate. And it continues, of course, with age 60 being having sex. <laughs> and as, as all things do, they come in full cycle, of course. We keep on going. It's six out of the day, seven out of the day. 
Page 75 is having a friend. You know where we're going? <laughs> Not paying attention. So we can celebrate these milestones that are successful on the way. And there are people that help them with that. And of course, that it's, it's valuable. So I want to share with you and bring it home a little bit more. Bring it home a little bit more. I want to share with you off your website. Someone that I felt very inspired by, Holly Saunders. Anybody work with Holly? I just love what she wrote here. I'm going to share with you. If I slow down, it helps too. I'm going to share what Holly Saunders has said about what happened to her on, from, from your website because this is a measure of success. I want to celebrate with you now. Holly Saunders, Bedford Sackville Learning Network, Fall River, Nova Scotia. My name is Holly Saunders. I'm 65 years old, married with four children and 18 grandchildren. I'm not happy that I only went to grade eight. When my children were growing up, I, would not, I could not help them with their homework. As my ch grandchildren were growing up, I decided to do something about it. One of my daughters asked me if I was interested in going back to school. I said, yes, of course, she said. She called the school and I, I, and, and I entered. Age 65, can you imagine? Well, I actually can. <laughs> That's what the people do every day with you. Uh, it was the best move I ever made. My, I met the teacher, they interviewed me, and then, then they asked me what I wanted to, what, what I would like to do, and she said, I would like to write a book one day. I went and did my upgrading. I'm planning to do my GED. However, I still have more math to complete. <laughs> my family was surprised when I went back to school. So far, all my gran grandchildren have graduated. The one, one is going to be a doctor. I'm so proud of them, and I would like to be able to understand what they're talking about. They're all doing very well. I talk to people every day about our school. Some think you're too old to learn. I'm so proud of myself that and with the help of my wonderful teachers, I'm able to write my book and hope to have it finished some, uh, sometime in June of next year. It's never too late to learn. When, 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 when my book is finished, I will, I will finish my math and go for my GED. People say, where, where, where will you? Oh, oh yeah. People say, when will you be finished with school? And I said, probably, check this out, I love this. Probably when I'm 100. There's always so much to learn. I cannot thank my school enough. It's just another dream come true. Milestone success on a person's life at age 65. She got there because of you. She's, she's going to climb her mountain, and she's going to climb it because of you. I wonder if she's having sex. I wonder if she's having sex. <laughs> <laughs> you know, she's probably quite attractive. <laughs> you know, going back to school, because, because you know why? Because the confidence is probably out. The comment is really probably really hot, so she probably made so she'll so, so probably make a pretty hot date. <laughs> well, to try try to date somebody that has low confidence, you, you, you really don't want to jump their bones, do you? <laughs> I'm, 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 you got me going now. Stop that. Stop that. So for this reason, for this reason, I want to celebrate you. I want to celebrate you because what you do is important in, this, in, in, in Nova Scotia, and I want to celebrate that. And so uh, I could, when I say unsung heroes, we could say, well, she's an unsung hero too. Yeah, maybe she is. Maybe she is. For her family, she's probably an unsung hero. So for the people that she supported all those, lot, all those years, she's probably an unsung hero. But I want to bring it back to you because you're here, and I want to celebrate you as unsung heroes and, and just give you some credit and give you some support, give you some background, give you a few tricks and tools to take away with you to hopefully help you do what you do a little bit better. We're going to start off with a little journey. It's kind of like a slideshow. But this is, this is how you get to the mountains. This is how you get to Everest. You fly in, and, and unless you want to walk. Now, a couple of curious things. This, this, this airport's at 9,000 feet. So that's the runway there, and it actually drops off. 9,000 feet. So you, you, you get one shot. And you, you, the, 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 there's a bit of a grade. The, 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 the airport's actually graded about 20 degrees, so you, so you get a good chance to drop off the end. But it, it's actually kind of weird because you're going, and you fly and you go, back down the hill, right? And the other the curious note about this airport is it's rather short because right here is a brick wall. So you, you, you get one chance. <laughs> Then you pull in here, and so these folks are going up to, you, you, you can't actually fly to Everest because Everest is 29,000 feet. And if, 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 you're, if, if you ever notice, when you get into an airplane, they, they cruise at 29,000 feet. Hel helicopters can't go that high because there's not enough air to, to lift them up. So you have to, you have to hike, you have to walk. There's no, there's no trucks, there's no roads, there's no, there's no background like that. This is the trail of Everest. That's it. That's in the, in, in the, in the, in the lower lands. 
And that's a guy carrying someone else's backpack because the, the Sherpa guides, of course, are hired by, by the foreigners to carry, their, to carry their goodies. Here's me on the, one of the bridges. And yes, don't, don't do it if you don't like heights. <laughs> so they're going across the bridge. And here's a porter carrying some gear. Now, this is a local porter because he's not carrying backpacks. He's carrying supplies and provisions for the, for the villages in, in, uh, up in the higher in the mountains. But he's an unsung hero to some of the villages up in the mountains somewhere. Uh, and this, this little gal, this little guy, kid is being carried by his mom, who you, you can't see, but she's carrying him on a basket up the hill. And that's the trail, that, that, that's, that's the trail of Everest. That's it there, that's, that's my, my, my buddy Craig from Australia. So there you go. Don't twist your ankles, not very, not very good. It's free advice. So I just thought that was a cute little shot with the little guy looking at his mom's basket. And there's me at Everest, that's, that's, that's the top, that's the bottom. I flew a little kite, had some fun with that. It's, it's, it's a very, um, it's a very harsh, dark place, it's like a moonscape, but you actually don't feel, it, it, it doesn't feel cold, it feels warm. And so the, the name for Everest, Everest is actually the, the English name for it, but the locals call it, the, 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 the locals call Everest Sekarmatha. Sekarmatha means great mother. And you actually feel like you're in the bosom of the earth. It's a funny feeling, you're actually in the bosom of the earth when, when you're up there, with, at, at the, at, 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 quite literally, in the lap of the great mother. So that's, that's, the, that's the travel log part. I want you to meet this guy. This is a yak. I got some free advice for you. Free advice. Most of the, most of the trails are, are fairly wide and you can, you can see how there's room for a man and beast. But if you get a trail like this and there's a yak coming down the trail, I got some free advice for you. The mountains this way, the valley down there, the path is this wide, and the yaks are this wide. Get some free advice for you. Watch your back, and the, 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 the yaks knock you off your trail. Free advice. Yeah, but it's going to cost you more because we're actually going to look at this as a metaphor. So there's the yak, there's you. And there's the mountain, there's, there's, the, there's the journey. There are three yaks that professionals encounter, three yaks that I work with that, that people run into that, that give them trouble. There's the stress yak. You know the stress yak, that's the, the too busy, the, the, I call it the busy bee yak, where you're too physically burned out to, 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 to do a good job. You're too physically burned out to go down the trail of your, of your career. You're too physically burned out to, to help others along that path. You're too physically burned out to, to be creative. You're too, too physically burned out to fill in the blanks. You're stressed, you're, you're, you're maxed. So that when the stress yak comes at you, I would like to share some tricks and tools to help you divert the stress yak so it doesn't bump you off your path because you've got important things to do. The other yak is the difficult people yak, also known as the jerk yak. <laughs> the jerk yak is when people are coming at you that take that suck your energy out of you. <clears throat> Excuse me. Do, do, do you know the people I'm talking about? No, yeah. You, you have them? Just, just, just me and you? <laughs> <laughs> well, those people can suck the energy off you and uh, away from you, and when they're coming down the trail, uh, I, I got, uh, when I worked with the government, I used to get a, f a phone call from a guy named Andrew, and he, his, his, co his number would flash up on the screen, and I would have an anxiety flash, because the, the guy drove me, drove me crazy, and I would just, the, the phone would ring, and I'd see his, number, his name, I'd be like, jeez, oh, i got to talk to him. <laughs> so it's, he took a lot of emotional energy, and while that emotional energy is being spent on difficult people, you're not on the trail. In fact, you're not walking down the path. You're actually, you're actually going sideways, trying to get rid of them. I'm saying, I'm going to share with you some ideas on how to get rid of the, not, not get rid of them from the sense of <laughs> how, how to deal effectively with the person that gets under your skin, how to celebrate their being, if you will. And the third yak is the, called the attitude yak, because there's a great little quote that goes like this. Your attitude determines your altitude. Your attitude will determine your altitude. And if your attitude isn't going to work for you, it's going to diminish your capacity to want to go off the trail, diminish your self-worth, diminish whatever it, is, whatever it means, then that, that's a shame. And so I want to share with you some thoughts and ideas around what I call the third yak, which is the attitude yak, which is the, which is the mind yak, if you will. So there's the, there's the physical yak, the, the stress yak, there's the emotional yak, which is that connection with, with other people, and there's the, uh, the, 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 um, the mind yak. Now, I should also mention, I'm trying to go green, environmentally friendly. There's actually a whack of handouts on this topic. So if you want them, give me a card or take a, take a, little, take a, little, uh, take a little sticky note. 
and drop it in the basket over there before the end of the day. So take a second and put your email address. I'll be happy to send it to you. Uh, all the stuff that I'm talking about today, and, and I'll, I'll flag a couple if you want to flag. Just make, make a little note, and I'll be happy to send, send in the goodies around the act taming and all that kind of stuff. All, all resources for you to help you out. So the first act. Do I recognize this one? The first act. Quote, it ain't the mountain ahead of you that wears you out, but the grain of sand in your shoe. True or false? What do you think? That's true, isn't it? It's not the little stuff. We can handle the little stuff. If the kid gets sick or whatever, we, we can handle that stuff. It's the big things. I'm um, sorry, it's, the, it's, it's, the, it's not the big stuff. We, it's all the little things that add up over time, over time, over time, over time, that, that drives nuts and, and drain our, our, our energy. So it, it's very, very challenging, uh, challenging that way. I want to give you a little test. I know you've had a nice day here. It's a Friday afternoon. You're probably feeling pretty relaxed. I want to give you a little test. Because one of the things that happens with, with, with uh, stress is that it actually affects the physical body. And it affects the physical body in a whole bunch of different ways. For example, stress, as you probably know from workshops that you've taken before, stress is, is the um, stressful situations uh, create something in the body, a chemistry in the body called cortisol. And when cortisol is created, it courses the body and tightens the body up to, 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 to do three things, to fight, to fight or to freeze. So, so bunny rabbits, uh, jaguars, or, or whatever the other one is. <laughs> fight, 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 flight, or freeze. So that would be your stress, so it would tense, tense the body up. So when cortisol is happening, when stress is happening, it actually affects your body in really negative ways. So it tightens things up. So how, how many people are, are, how many are, I'll just do a little show of hands, how many people are, are how many people are headachers? How many people get headaches when they're stressed out? Headache, headache, headachers? Sometimes, okay. How many people are neckers? I'm sorry, that's a personal question. <laughs> How many people get stressed in the neck area, neck and shoulders area? Okay, neck and shoulders. Chest and stomach, the upset stomach, chest, the diarrhea, or whatever. Okay, so uh, there's a million different ways that stress affects our body. And one of the things that they they done, done they they done. One of the things they've done in research is to research the, that actually affects the optic nerve. So when you're stressed out, your, your optic nerve is, is stressed out. So I have, I have a visual image up here on the board to share with you, which is actually a stress test. Now, if you're, if you're calm and cool and collected and uh, you're just, just chilling, you, you actually don't see any difference between the two, the, between the two animals. There's, there's, there's two dolphins jumping out of the water, okay? And they're jumping out of the water at the exact same time. If, you, if, if you're stressed out a little bit, you'll see, you might see a couple differences, like one or two differences. If you're moderately stressed out, you'll see three or four differences. If you're maximum stressed out, you'll see five or six or more differences, okay? Because the optimum nerve gets, gets tense, tensed up, so you're like, like, like you believe you get a headache. So uh, I'm not going to do a show of hands. I'll just, I'll just share this with you and see how you're doing. <laughs> how you doing? You okay? You doing, feeling okay? Not too dull? Good? Not too bad? If it were so easy to just take a visual test to, to, to indicate our stress levels, it would be okay, but, but it's not so easy. We have, to, we have to be careful and watch when stress builds up on us. If we, had, if, if we were a glowworm, it would be much simpler. We could, we could sing the glowworm song. I wish I was a glowworm, a glowworm was never glowing, because how can you be grumpy when the sun shines out your bum? <laughs> we could see Amory on a Monday morning and say, Amory, you had a great weekend. Look at you glowing, girl. <laughs> We're ready for a big week, a big, big week of being the old, the, the boss, right? <laughs> we can see poor old Jane over there saying, oh, Jane, you're burned out, baby. You better take care of yourself. <laughs> so if, if it were so simple, right? If it were so simple. So I want to do some exercises around celebrating the physical body, the body that we have in terms of our stress body. But I want to actually start off by celebrating uh, body, the body parts. So I'm going to invite you to pair up. I should be careful with that. I'm going to invite you to talk with each other. About, uh, about, about, about a conversation I'm going to have with you. I'll give you the extent. I have a question for you. So pair up and listen to the answers to the other person. Would you be so kind as to pair up now? Pair up with somebody so you can have a chat. You may want to move over chat with him. He looks like a nice fellow. <coughs> Okay, here's the question. <laughs> share, this, share this one if you'd be so kind, just to celebrate the body. What's your favorite body part and why? Oh, oh sorry, sorry, on, your, on you. <laughs> on you, on you. Your, your, your favorite body part and why? We don't have to share this thing. <laughs> no, it's, op it's optional. Favorite body part. One minute, go. 
Go ahead. You want to start? What's your favorite one card? Okay, ding, ding, ding. Let's hear a few. Favorite, favorite party cards. What were her favorite party cards? No, you, well, you can share hers if you want. Oh, uh, they, uh, they, uh, feet? My feet. Feet. Tell us about your feet. Why do you sell me? They take me where I need to get to. They take you where you need to go. That's wonderful. Do you get the massage? I do. Excellent. No, no, uh, here you go. <laughs> no, 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 no. Feet are incredible. We, we take it for granted. They actually take the entire weight of our body every single day, and they take us places we want to go. So let's celebrate our feet. That's fabulous. Thank you. Any other parts, body parts you'd like to share? I'm sorry. Any, any other body parts you'd like to talk about? <laughs> You're <a> very <favorite> close. <laughs> Anything else? Eyes, tell us about your eyes. Yeah, because I just can't imagine not being able to see things or not being able to read. Yeah, yeah, to, to, to look at the beautiful things we see every day, isn't it incredible? Mm -hmm. You only have to be humbled to, to, to meet someone that's blind to really, really appreciate that. Mm -hmm. And to, to be able to read and to be able to see things with your eyes. The, you know, the, the Hebrews say that the eyes are the windows to the soul. So the eyes are incredible, so thank you for celebrating your eyes, yeah. Okay, well, any, anybody else want to share? Yeah, hands. Tell us what your hands. Just very tactile. Everything we do provide comfort for everyone's family. So provide comfort for your family. Wipe away tears. Wipe away tears. Bake cookies. Do beautiful things like that with your hands. Ah, it's nice. Thank you. Beautiful. So, all the 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 there are two thousand body parts. You, 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 were, you were that, I believe, 2000 soap established that fact. I think I lost my mic, haven't I? Check, check, check. No. Check, 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 okay. Okay, believe for 2000 soap <laughs> says there's 2000 body parts. So let's, let's get into it. Let, let's do some stuff that will help you with your body parts and get into the stuff. The first thing, the, the, the three things that help diet, exercise, and sleep. Diet, go just do it, just eat properly, that's fine. Exercise. Sleep. People talk about life-work balance. They talk about having life-work balance, but people don't talk about day-night balance. Because when you give to the day, when you give to the day, you have to replenish at the, at the night. It's, it, it's, it's incredibly powerful stuff. The, the great bird himself, Sir William Shakespeare, put it so beautifully, I'll just read it to you, because you can see it for yourself. Sleep that knits up the rabble, sleep of care, the death of each day's life. Sore labor's bath, Balm of hurt minds. Great in nature's second course, chief nourisher in life's feast. Awake, asleep. Life, work balance, awake, sleep balance. Now, I'm not sure if you're aware of this or not, but we spend a third of the day just sleeping. A third of the day at work, a third of the day doing life, and a third of the day sleeping eight, 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 eight hours, eight hours, eight hours. That's a third of a week. That's a third of a month. That's a third of a year. That's a third of a life. There's no single activity we do more of than sleep. 26 years on average in Canada is, uh, is us being in bed. Now they, they, say, they say that you spend six, six months of your life also looking for lost socks. <laughs> but but in about, about a year and a half brushing your teeth. But, but uh, 26 years. So if there's anything that you need to do to get that going better, please feel free to try that out. The first resource I have for you is the seven steps to wake up happy. Now this is a client conversation as well, because client, learner, sorry Jane, 
So the learner conversation, she said, don't call them clients, so they're learners. Okay, so I it. This is a learning conversation because if they're tired when they come to you, they're, they're, they're going to be less effective. In fact, if, you're, if you lose an hour of sleep, you're 30% less effective during the day, an hour of sleep. So if you'd like a free resource, I'll send it to you. Just put ZZZ on, on the sticky note, and I'll send you the seven steps to wake up happy, OK? So pass that in. Just put ZZZ with your, with your email when you're here. And I'll send you this with the wake up happy guy. So that's important, for sure. But what's also important is diet and, and, and as well as exercise. Move it or lose it. Isn't that wonderful? To be so nimble. I know it's a big thing for me because my whole right side's stepping up, right? So if I can do anything at all, I'm pretty happy about it. Now, I, I want to give you the lazy version of this. I, I, I actually don't have much time. I, I, I get two little kids. I, I, I have very little time to exercise. But I, I've discovered a way to get the same benefits of exercise without getting out of your chair. I'd like to share that with you now. It, because the way the way the, the way the brain works physiologically is that what exercise actually does. The reason that exercise is so stress is, is so stress preventative. The reason that why dancing feels so good. The reason why sex feels so good. The reason why <laughs> dancing, sex, pain in the house, physical activity feels so good is because when you do physical activity, you generate endorphins. Endorphins is the body's happy juice, and what, what do endorphins do to cortisol? They flush cortisol out of your body. So you can't be laughing or, and be stressed at the same time. You can't be dancing and be stressed at the same time. You can't be doing everything else and be stressed at the same time because it physically, the physiology changes the chemistry of your body. So when you're laughing, it's really powerful stuff. Now, there's some, there's some, there's some pretty good evidence around this, but I'll just tell you a story to bring it home. I was flying from, uh, from Victoria to Calgary, and I was running a little early for my flight, and I, I had a 5 o'clock flight, but the, the check-in gal said, we have a 3 o'clock flight leaving in 10 minutes, you can probably still get on it. I said, great, I'll, I'll get on a 3 o'clock flight. So I got on one of these, what, the, what I call them little cigar planes, they're about this big around. In fact, they're like, they're like 6 foot, this, the, 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 the planes are 6 feet high, and I'm 6 foot 3. So uh, the, the, the kind of cramped little quarters. Of course, I get the last seat in the plane. She said, I, I have the last seat on the plane for you. It's seat 1A. I said, great, I'll take it. So I, so I, uh, there's, there's seat 1A, 1B, 1C, 1D, right? So I slid, slid in beside a, a, little, a little, little, there's another L word, damn those L words, an old lady <laughs> who, 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 who was small in stature. And, uh, it's a small lady, and sat in seat one end. Of course, I'm sitting there with my 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 six foot three and my legs up uh, up, up around my my nose, right? I'm saying, oh, what a terrible flight this is going to be. The, the 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 small statured lady says, why don't you sit over there in one C where the stewardess's coat is, because you can stick your feet up the aisle. I said, great idea. So I said to the stewardess after she after she did her her her, her airplane check and you know seatbelt thing, and I, we were actually in the air. I said, ma'am, do you mind if I sit in the, in the seat over there because I'm kind of tall and I can stick my legs up? And she looked at me and said, oh, I was going to sit there. I said, oh, she's having a bad day. And then after a pregnant pause, she said, oh, go ahead. I said, well, I think you're darn right, I'm going ahead. <laughs> so I, I, I stuck, my, stuck my legs up the aisle and sat in one, in one seat. I, had actually, I actually had to move her jacket over because it, it, was, it was sort of in my seat, in my seat. So, so she does her car run, does the water and the snacks and all that kind of stuff. Comes up and sits down beside me by the window, and she's she's going through her um, her numbers and doing some money stuff. And she and she starts she starts um, starts rubbing her head and, and going like this with her, with her hand going like this. And look, kind of look at the window. We sit beside me. Uh, in, 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 with any language, folks, that's a universal symptom for what? For headache. She's got a really splitting headache. And I said to her, "Ma'am, I got something that will take your headache away." She said, no, it'll go away and so on. I said, no, really, I do. And I held out one of these. And I gave her this. I said, here, try this on. And she said, what's that? A red foam condos, I say. She, she said, are you kidding? I said, yes, I am. <laughs> That's the whole point of it. If you put a clown nose on, I, 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 I didn't give her the science of it, but I said, if you put a clown nose on, it'll take away, your, take away your headache. And she said, I can't do that. I have to look responsible. I said, sure you can. So I got an on-route magazine. And then I know what airline is. I get, I get on, on with the magazine. I said, I'll, I'll, I'll hold the magazine up like this. So she said, she said, oh, all right, all right, put the thing on. So she stuck the nose on. I held the magazine up like this so she, no one could see her. In five seconds, ten seconds, it's gone! My headache is gone! 
And sure enough, the silliness of the nose was just enough to st stimulate the brain to say it's silly time. It's laughter time, it's humor time, it's, f it's fun time. And the, the cortisol was flushed out by the, uh, enough endorphins to, to flush it out. Now, as it turns out, that was a fifth flight that day. It was at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. It was a fifth flight. She started flying at 5 o'clock in the morning. She was exhausted. She was tired. She was cranky. She had a bad day. And also men lost her because she had beaten nose cancer twice. So the, 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 the nose actually meant something to her that way as well. And she said, you know, she said, are you, uh, you going to disappear when you get off the plane? And I said, uh, no, I'm just going to go into the airport and whatever. She, she says, she, she says you're like, you're, you. she said, you're like an angel who came on the plane to, 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 to rescue me from my, my headaches and my troubles. And I said, well, no, I actually wasn't supposed to be on this plane. She, she, she said, are you really sure about that? I said, oh, I guess I was. And so on the way out the door, she actually gave me a, a pen. And I thought, well, she, I thought she felt a little obliged to do that, right? So she gave me a pen. And I said, well, you, you, you don't have to do that. And I said, well, she, 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 she said, just take it. And so I took it in the airport. And I, I looked at the side of the pen that she was using. It was a scripture reading from Psalm 93, I think it was. And said, for he shall send his angels concerning you. I thought, that's kind of cool. So the red-nosed angel is <laughs> my, my, new, my new business card. <laughs> now, I brought a bunch of these for you. They're on the table over there. If you'd like to take some home, feel free to take some home. I, 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 am, asking for, I am asking for a donation for charity, so a bucket, bucket, bucket thing. If you want to take a bag, throw, throw 10 bucks in the box. There's, there's 12, there's 12, 12, 12, 12 notes in the bag. So feel free to take them back to your team. Feel free to whatever, because they're really, really useful for lots of reasons. What, what, what could be some reasons that you, that, that you could use a nose for? Staff meeting. Have a staff meeting with the nose. If you have a tough staff meeting, I guarantee it will go better, much better. Do you ever get stuck in traffic around here? Are you stuck in traffic? And someone's trying to cut you off? Just it's really simple. Put the nose on, beep your horn, and just wave. They will let you in front of them. They let you in front of them every single time. So guarantee to work. Guarantee to work. The other thing is with the, the step, uh, the seven steps where you can have a step five is actually go to, have, to go to bed with a light heart. Because a heavy heart is, 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 is a heavy heart is a light sleep. Does that make sense? A heavy heart is a light sleep. A light heart is a heavy sleep. So it's a, it's a, there's a formula. So to lighten your heart, you can actually wear what it, wear when going to bed to lighten up your mood. And if you want to give one to your partner, you can use your imagination from there. <laughs> I don't want to interrupt you, but can I say something? It's quite funny that um, at a, we're having some difficulties with my coworkers and. We had this sort of motivational speaker come and talk to us about stress and think things we could do. And um, we were some co-workers were having difficulties, personality difficulties with each other. So she had us put bunny teeth, sit in a circle, and we all had to put plastic bunny teeth in our in our mouth. And then we had to talk Perfect. about our problems. Perfect. <laughs> and it was the greatest thing. That's the best. You know, people, you know, she said, make eye contact with the person that you have these yeah. issues with and, and talk about it with yeah. bunny teeth. <laughs> it was wonderful. And so I just thought of that. Well, what is it about this that kids laugh 300 times a day and adults laugh 12? If they're trying hard. What is that about that? Why, what, where do we lose our joy? Because that's a fantastic thing. Adults actually need, to, uh, uh, adults actually need yeah. tools to, to get the job done. Noses, noses, teeth, and whatever, it's fun. You, 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 you can get pig nose and all kinds of stuff. So, so definitely do it in the meeting, in big board meetings too. Oh, <laughs> uh, well, the chairs over there. Before, before the meeting starts, say, look, we've got a big budget meeting today, folks. I want everybody to pick their nose. And just pause, pause for a fact, and then put a bag of nose something. Here, please pick your nose, or, 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 or pick, pick your teeth, whatever, right? So, what is it about laughter that, that we that we forget about, right? Nor Norm Cousins was diagnosed with a, with a, with a rare disease in the 19s, in the, in, the, in the early 40s or 50s or whatever it was, and he was actually sent home to die because they couldn't do, do anything more. He, had, he was in chronic pain. He said, "Look, if, I, if, if I'm going to die, I'm going to die. I'm, I'm going to die laughing." And he's, he actually got Marx Brothers movies and watched Marx Brothers movies. And he found out that to 10 minutes of belly laughter, he could sleep free, pain free for two hours. 10 minutes of belly laughter, he could sleep pain free for two hours. So laughter is extremely powerful stuff. Now, I could talk a little more about the theory of laughter. But what I'd like to do is actually invite you to laugh. 
You, you, you're probably thinking, well, there's nothing funny. I didn't say there's something anything funny. I, I, I'm actually not going to tell a joke because uh, a joke is humor. Humor is not the same thing. The physical act of laughing, the physical act, act of making yourself laugh, going ha 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 ha, if you're stuck in, stuck in traffic, go ha ha, damn it, ha ha. <laughs> the physical act of laughing is enough to generate the endorphins because the brain doesn't know, does not know the difference between them. So I'm going to invite you to stand up and push the chairs in. We'll do a little laughter. <laughs> Just take it to make If you don't feel like it, don't worry about it. Just, just, just do it. Just, uh, so watch your, watch, your, watch, your, watch your chair. Like, make sure you don't bang your chair, right? So I'll start off. We'll just do the light, just do a little light thing with breathing. Just breathe in and, and bend from the diaphragm. We'll do it three times. Excuse me. Just breathing in. And just exhale. Breathing in. And exhale. Breathing in. And exhale. Now, just to warm you up, we're going to do a, a, the light, the light laugh. The, the, the light laugh that is the is called the titter. You know the titter? Tee hee hee. You know, tee. Okay, we'll just go tee hee. Ready? And uh, <laughs> wait for. Ready? Breathe in. Tee. Breathe in. Tee. Tee. Okay, that's pretty good. So let's do a little, a little, a little, a little, a little chuckle, a little ha ha ha. Ready? Ready? Ha 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 ha. Okay, let's ramp it up a little bit more. Let's do a ho ho ho. Ready? Ready? Ho 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 do you want to go, do you want to do, uh, do Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> the, the, the next level could be the knee slapper. So it, it, it's a little bit more of a, a, a verbal, but it's also slapping your knee. So we're going to, as you go down, slap your knee and just, let, just let, let it rip a little bit more. You ready? To the end. Okay, so <laughs> after me, we'll go like this. I'll, I'll, I'll do once you do that after me. I'm, I'm, I'm going to clap twice and then clap three times. I'm going to go over here and clap twice and clap three times. Okay, so together, we'll do three times. One, two, one, two, three. 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 One, two, Okay, now let's add ho ho ha 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 to that. Ready? Ho ho ha ha ha. 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 Beautiful, beautiful. Let's add a little bit more. Let's go ho ho ha ha. Ready? Ho ho ha ha ha. 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 Beautiful. Now what I'd like you to do is to find a partner and talk to you and tell them a story about how, how the conference is going today, but talk in gibberish. Gibberish is a language that uh, is, a, is a made up language. So we're all going to talk to Marisa? Yep. Marie. I'm going to say, I'm going to tell her how, how, how my day is going, but I'm going to, I'm going to tell them gibberish. Ready? Yeah, tell me how your day is going too. We'll shake hands. Oh, Scott, what are you doing? Oh, Scott, what are so tell us how your days have gone so far in Jewish.
really, there's, there's, a, there's a lot more to this that goes with this, but I'll do one more. The, this last one. The last one is the, the, the truth of organizations that people don't always get along. So there's a way to have an argument and resolve it using laughter. So Marie and I are going to have an argument, and we're going to no, no physical contact. We're, 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 we're going to make our point using laughter only, make our point using laughter. And then I'm not, I'm not sure about you, but whenever it comes to a resolution, you always feel like it, you could apologize if there's some understanding. And the way to do that in laughter yoga is to tug your ear. So when you think it's come to a resolution, just tug your ear. And that, that's the way to, to symbolize it. Ready? So we're going to make a striding point about our, 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 with our argument using laughter. You ready? Ha, ha, ha. Ha ha. Ha 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 ha
Now over there in the on the far east, they 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 don't shake hands. They they actually go like this, and they they put their hands together and they bow and they say Namaste. That's the first word. Can everybody say Namaste? Yes. Namaste. And Namaste means in English, roughly translated, that the light in me honors the light that's in you. So basically, you're saying instead of saying hello, you're saying hey, hello, hello. hey, I like your light. It's kind of a nice way to greet people, isn't it? Celebrating the light within, e within each other. And the other word that I want to share with you is Ubuntu. Can you say Ubuntu? Ubuntu, Ubuntu is, a, is an African concept. It's, it's, it's common in several languages in Africa, but it's an, the, the concept is more important. The concept, and I, when I think of unsung heroes, I think of Namaste, seeing the light in others, and wanting to lift that light and make the, make the light brighter. And also the Ubuntu. And Ubuntu means, in, in, in translate into English, is that I am because we are. I am me because we are us. And there, there's no disconnection, no separation between the two. I am because we are. So Namaste and Ubuntu are two languages that, outside of English that celebrate this notion of having being in right relationship with, an, with another human being. So how do you get there? Well, I want to talk about, very briefly about some work that I'm doing called the, 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 the Anatomy of Peace, Resolving the Heart.